Hi, everybody. Welcome to Code Break. My name is Hadi, and there's a whole bunch of people joining us on a Zoom call, as well as on Facebook Live and on YouTube Live. Together, we're hoping to build the world's largest live interactive classroom. With so many students at home due to the pandemic, my team at Code.org invites families everywhere to join us for a weekly dose of inspiration, community, and computer science. I'm here with my daughter and sidekick, Sophia. She's a Hi, so yeah, she's a, she's a budding computer scientist. And I'd like to introduce our first special guest, Sal Khan. If you're like the many tens of millions of students who've ever learned something interesting on Khan Academy, Sal is the founder and CEO. He's a good friend, and he's one of my personal inspirations for why I started Code.org. Sal, how are you? Good. How are you all doing? Hey, Sophia. Hey, Hadi. Hi there. And where are you calling us from? I am calling from the walk-in closet in our uh, master bedroom. This is actually where Khan Academy uh, started. So in some uh, strange way, uh, COVID has got us back to our, our roots <laughs> in Mountain View, California. And that's great. And what's been the impact on Khan Academy with school closing and so many students being at home? Well, uh, you can imagine, you know, when we started seeing the schools, uh, well, we, we initially saw a traffic peak in, in, in places like uh, Taiwan and South Korea, because that's where they saw the first wave of, of obviously COVID and some of the closures. And then uh, we saw when that first week that the U.S. closed and then really much of the world, our traffic since then has been about 3x of what it typically has been. And so we've just been trying to, you know, make sure that everything is up and running and then trying to figure out how to support folks in, in, in more ways. And I know y'all are doing that as well. And I guess this is part of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been difficult for all of us. Uh, this week is a very special week. It's Teacher Appreciation Week. Uh, do you have any thoughts you'd like to share with the teachers or the parents who are on the call or students? Yeah, you know, I think I, well, I think there's a couple of layers there. This would have been teachers appreciate teacher appreciation week regardless of, of what's going on in the broader world. But I think especially with uh, so many students at home and a lot of it, you know, leaning more on us uh, parents and on, on, on the students, I think that gives us even a deeper appreciation uh, for what teachers do day in, day out. And I, I think I could speak for a lot of you students. I see a lot of great young faces out there that a lot of times, you know, you go to school day in, day out and you can kind of take it for granted. You can say, oh, I got to go to school. I got to sit through this class. But now that you don't have it, I'm, I'm hearing from a lot of young people that they really miss it and they really miss those teachers and they really miss those engagements. So I think we're all appreciating teachers that much more. And I know a lot of teachers are doing heroic efforts to su continue to support uh, all of us, uh, as we go through this COVID crisis, I know my kids, uh, you know, the teachers are uh, really making themselves available and are kind of doing whatever they can to get us through this. So yes, teacher appreciation a week takes on special, special meaning uh, right now, you know, personally, and especially if I were to, you know, there's a lot of teachers that have had very meaningful impact in my life. Uh, but, you know, two, especially when I think about on the coding side of things, since this is a, a code.org event, uh, I remember, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, sorry, Mr. Hernandez was my algebra two teacher, but he's the first one. I actually, I didn't have a computer, but I was fascinated by it. And, and he actually introduced me to programming my calculator, uh, which, you know, I still they have these TI and that's actually where I discovered a love for programming. And then at the local university, uh, Dr. Santania, I was taking classes at university of new Orleans. I must've been about 15 years old. And he saw that I really cared about, like, I was really intrigued by computing and he kind of made up an internship for me so that I could program on the computers at the university. Uh, and if he hadn't done that for me, uh, you know, who knows, the world would have been, might have been very different. Khan Academy wouldn't have existed if I didn't have the coding skills to at least build it in those early stages. And I wouldn't have had those coding skills or the confidence to do it if Dr. Santania uh, didn't let me use his computers because I my, my family couldn't afford one. So a lot of teachers played a big role in my life and, and especially on that computing side of things. That's beautiful. And pretty much anybody, if you ask them why did they like, what was their favorite subject and why, the reason is usually because of that teacher. So uh, we're going to talk about Teacher Appreciation Week throughout the episode, but let's start with the computer joke of the day with Sophia. Okay. Um, what do you call it when a computer science student make fun of each other? A computer, computer science students make fun of each other. I don't um, know. What do you call it? The answer is cyberbullion. Cyberbullion. <laughs> cyberbullion. And bullion is one of our words of the day today, and we're going to learn about that in a bit. Uh, since Khan Academy has so much math instruction this week, we're also going to have a math joke. Okay. Since 
Oh wait, you already said that. Okay, what is the scariest kind of math? The scariest kind of math. Tell me, what is the scariest type type, type of math? The aftermath. What was that? Oh, the aftermath. The aftermath. Oh, yeah. Okay. That got a little we, dark. We wrote that joke ourselves. Uh, <laughs> so we want to briefly meet our uh, live audience. We have a dozens of students on camera, so we're going to switch to gallery mode so everybody can see all of them. Can everybody wave and say hello? And we're going to unmute you. Hi. Oh, hi. 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 Hello. Oh, hey, everyone. Hello. So there, there are a few dozen students who are on camera, but there's uh, a whole lot of more students, over a thousand students who are joining us in live via the Zoom webinar feature. I'm going to screen share briefly so we can see on the map where everybody's from. So you can now see a map which shows uh, all around the world as people were dialing in, they were putting in their locations. Uh, and there's people joining us from as early as 7 a.m. their time, all the way till 2 a.m. In the, in the middle of the night and uh, all around the world. It's pretty incredible. And Sal, just so you know, we have students who are joining us as young as six years old and as old as folks who are in their later years, older adults in their 60s or 70s. Uh, the, the experience level with computer science ranges all the way from beginner to advanced. If any of you are joining us and you're an advanced student, Please be patient. We're going to start with more easy stuff first, and we'll, we'll get to advanced stuff later. And if you're a beginner and things move too fast for you, don't worry. You may not be able to keep up and learn everything, but if you try, you'll, you'll get a little bit of it. And then next, later on, when you grow up, uh, you'll be able to rewatch and get better at it. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is, as we go through this episode, if you have any questions, you can post them to code.org slash questions. And because it's Teacher Appreciation Week, if you'd like to give a shout out to a special favorite teacher, just like Sal did, please go to this URL and submit something like a shout out, put the name of the teacher and where you're from and what was special about the teacher. We're gonna read some of these out later on in the episode to say special thanks to teachers that have impacted us. Today, we're gonna to be learning about conditionals, uh, which is an important concept in computer science and computer programming. And there's gonna be three parts, Boolean expressions, flow charts, and then we're going to learn about if and if else statements in App Lab. But before we get into the lesson, what I want to do is to welcome some students to demo their creations. Each week uh, when we have our episode, we send challenges out at the end of the week for students to basically do some assignments and to share their creations with us. And each week when you share your creations, we'll invite you back on the next episode to share what you created. And, and so that's what we're going to be looking at now. Uh, and let me share my screen in just a second to show the creations from this past week. All right. Uh, so here we have a creation from Adit, who's from Bangalore, India. It's too late at night for Adit because he's 10 years old. Uh, but what he created was uh, he used protocols to send binary information to create these pixel images to spell out coding is cool. Uh, the, other th the other submission we have, oops, excuse me. The other submission we have is from Willow, who's eight years old from Whitley Bay in the United Kingdom. And since we learned about protocols, she sent, she created a message sending protocol. We're gonna play her video briefly. Oops. <laughs> All right, she's bouncing a ball and throwing it up in the air. Next letter. All right, so Willow's actually on the call with us. Willow, are you there? Yeah. Could you explain to Sal what you're doing in that video when you're bouncing the ball? So what were you doing in the video? So you bounced it. Why were you bouncing the ball? So it's there being place of the light, wasn't it? So yeah, you so. threw it up for a one. Were you sending it as a one or a zero? Were, were some of the bounces a ones and some of them zeros? Yeah. So, so throw was a one, a bounce was a zero. <clears throat> a throw was a one and a bounce was a zero. And then there was right. a click through. The clicks were the time. So you knew 
when the letter had finished and then you would go on to the next letter, didn't you? All right, well, thank you so much for joining us, Willow. <laughs> I think Willow's a little bit embarrassed to be in front of an audience of a thousand people. Uh, is Sylvia there with us as well? Sylvia? I'm not sure if Sylvia's on the call. I'm, I'm here. Hi, Sylvia, where are you calling from? Louisville, Kentucky. And, and what grade are you in? Fourth grade. Fourth grade. Can you tell us uh, a little bit about your creation and what you sent in to us? Well, I made um, endangered mammals of the Arctic to bring uh, to bring awareness about endangered animals to kids. All right. So you made this website. Uh, what are these drawings? Did you make these yourself? Mm -hmm. On Google Drawings. Oh, cool. And so there's polar bears or Arctic foxes. And if I click through, I can get the actual real picture of the animals and to learn about these. So you made a website about Arctic animals and why they're endangered. And you made little drawings of each of them and you can go through to see each of them. And you made this entire website yourself on code.org's web lab. So if anybody missed last week's episode, there's an HTML page for each of these pages. So there's an HTML page for polar bears and an HTML page for reindeer. And Sylvia wrote the code for all of these pages directly in web lab as she's learning HTML and CSS. Thank you so much uh, to Sylvia and to Willow and to Adit for sharing your creations. Sophia, can you play an applause sound for our students? All right, so now we're gonna start uh, learning about Boolean expressions and conditionals. And now the reason this is important is computers make lots of decisions, both big and small. For example, when you're playing a game on a computer, if you get a better score than last time you played, the computer should change the high score. Or when you receive a call on your phone, if it's somebody in your contacts, you wanna display their name. Or when you get an email, if it has inappropriate content, you want it marked as spam. Sometimes these could be big decisions that are made up of a lot of small decisions and how the computer works through those decisions involves something called Boolean expressions, which is our word of the day. Uh, now Sal is, is known for his ability to explain difficult, difficult stuff and difficult concepts in an easy to digest format. So Sal, can you help explain to our students what a Boolean expression is? Well, I'll try. You set high standards, but <laughs> well, a, a Boolean is a, an expression that will result as either being true or false. Uh, so uh, for example, if I were to say, um, Hadi is taller than Sophia, that is either going to be true or false. That is a, you could view it as a Boolean expression. Uh, we, we could we could actually poll people who, who thinks it's true. So why don't we actually do this? We're going to have Sal uh, read out a few Boolean expressions, and they're going to be either true or false. And if you think they're true, show a thumbs up. And if you think they're false, show a thumbs down. So everybody who's in the on-camera audience can do this. Even if you're not on camera, you can do this at home. Uh, and so Sal, uh, why don't you give us a few examples of these Boolean expressions True is thumbs up, false is false, thumbs down. Yeah, well, we can start with that warm up. Hadi is taller than Sophia. All right, that was that was an easy one. Yes, that was it, an results, easy one. It, it results in a true. It's a it's a so that's a Boolean expression. So I'll give you another warm up. Three is larger than four. There's something interesting going on, Hadi. I think a lot of people are seeing what other people are doing. And so it's kind of a majority rule. Yeah, people, people are <laughs> that's another phenomenon that we can see each other. That's another happen. phenomenon that we, we can we can study. Yes, of course, that, that, that is uh, false. Okay, the number of student panelists is greater than 10. True or false? Yes, true. We can clearly see in gallery mode, many more than, than 10 faces or, and 10 thumbs up. Okay, now we're gonna get a little bit complicated. Uh, what you're gonna see is that Boolean logic, and, and, when, and when you're coding, and some of y'all have probably done this, you're gonna involve a lot of nots, ands, ors, and so, and that, that starts to play with your head a little bit, and com computers are very good at it. So we gotta, get, we gotta get good at thinking like that as well. So we're going to combine some of these together to make a more complicated expression. Exactly. Exactly. So the first one is the Pacific is an ocean and the Nile is a lake. 
true or false for the whole statement? All right. So I'm seeing a lot of thumbs down. And that's interesting because the Pacific is an ocean. So even though the Pacific is an ocean, a lot of y'all are still thumb, thumbs. Okay. There's a lot of confidence out there because yes, it says, and the Nile is a lake and which we know that's false. So we had a true statement and a false statement. So the, and since it was, and the false statement made the whole thing false. What if I were to say the Pacific is an ocean or the Nile is a lake? Yes. That's, that's a true. That's a true, because only one of them have to be true in an or. Both of them could be true as well, but only one of them has to be true. So that one works. And then here we go. A fish is a sea creature and a, this is, this is, I'm going to read it carefully. A fish is a sea creature and a cat is not a dog. All right, yeah, because you, what you, the way you do it, the way at least I, my brain does is I try to break down each of them. I say, okay, fish is a sea creature. Okay, that's true. So I have something that's true and, and then I read the next one, a cat is not a dog. It is true. A cat is not a dog, at least the cats that I'm aware of. And so we'll have a true and a true. And so that's going to be a true. Sophia has a cat that's definitely not a dog. Uh, so let's do some of these as polls so that the entire audience on Zoom, there's, there's over a thousand people on Zoom can try it as, as well. And we have two slightly more complicated ones that we're going to post as Zoom polls. Uh, those of you who are on Facebook Live or YouTube Live, you won't see the, the polls, but you can try answering them as well. So, so we could put up the first Zoom poll and Sally, you can read it out. Okay. Five is an odd number and six is not even. All right, looks like, I mean, the, the group is definitely saying. Right, people are, some, not false. everybody's getting it right, but I think people have got the real hang of it. Uh, but most of you have voted, so if we could share the results. So 95% of you got this right. The, the answer is false because six is even. Can we put up the next one? And Sal, you can read it out as well. Not true this one plays with your brain not true is not false <laughs> this one's tricky but our audience is doing a reasonably good job at it not everybody's getting it right sal do you know the answer to this one yeah well i'll <laughs> tell you what my brain does when i read this i it, it does play with your brain a little bit <laughs> when you read it the first time but uh, you know, instead of saying, okay, not true is not false, what my brain says, okay, what is not true? So if I say, okay, if something isn't true, by definition, it is false. Uh, and so not true is false is a true statement. So not true is not false is a false statement. Or I, should I say <laughs> not true is a, not true is not false is a, is a not true statement. <laughs> <laughs> Right, if we could share the results of what our, our team voted. So 80% of you about got this correct. Uh, for the rest of you, that one was really a brain teaser and uh, is a little bit kind of complicated. So uh, thank you so much for quizzing us on Boolean expressions, Sal. So we learned that we can combine multiple questions to make a complex decision. And this is used all the time in computer programming or even life. For example, if I want to go hiking, if, if it's a weekend and it's sunny, I'll go hiking. And I need to check that both of those things are true in order to make my decision. Uh, Sal, before we go into learning the next thing, let's take a little break and learn a little bit about you. Uh, you are our second special guest to play our new lightning round game. So Sophia is gonna put 60 seconds on the clock and she's gonna uh, ask you a bunch of questions quickly. And Sophia, speak up so people can hear you well. Uh, your goal is to beat our current high score of six, which was set last week by Keegan Michael Key. So yes, okay, quantity seconds. quantity over quality is what we're going for. Well, you want to do both, but your score is on the okay, number. Of but I'm only measured by quantity. <laughs> That's true. Uh, are you ready, Sal? I'm ready. So if you're ready, set, go. The best book you've ever read. Uh, Foundation Isaac Asimov. What can always make you laugh? Uh, parents probably won't appreciate this, but potty humor. Country you've always wanted to visit, but haven't. New Zealand. 
What were your hobbies when you were a kid? Drawing. Your favorite smell? Rose. Favorite drink? There's kind of a, there's an Indian drink called lassi, which is like a mango type of smooth. Uh, sorry, like a, okay, okay, good. What lassi, are your okay. feelings about pineapple on pizza? It's great. Something you find yourself saying that your parents used to say? I call my 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 children weird words like dugaboo. <laughs> First thing you do in the morning. Meditate. Okay, it's done. Okay. Did I win? You got a score of nine. Oh, I think so that's... We, this app is doing an if statement now. If your score is bigger than six, then you have our new high <laughs> score. Else you don't. Uh, you so know, my meditation should make me not care about whether I won or not. <laughs> That's true, but you do now have our first but high I score. Do. Sophia, you want to give him a round of applause for that? All right, I'd like to invite a special teacher who's joining us today in honor of Teacher Appreciation Week. Flo, are you there with us? Flo? I'm here. I'm here. Hi, Flo. Hi. Where are you, where are you calling us from? Uh oh. I'm not sure if Flo is there still. <laughs> you got me? I'm still here. All right, we got you. Um, okay, you. great. Uh, there. Uh, there you are. So uh, Flo, we, had, we wanted to ask you to uh, share basically questions from our audience for Sal. Could you read them out for us, if that's possible? I, I sure can. So Sal, we have some questions from the audience. And so first we have our Revere in Mumbai wants to know what prompted you to start Cotton Academy? Oh, well, that's a, that's a good question. And, and nice to meet you, Flo. Uh, and, and thank you for being a teacher and the wonderful work you do. Uh, uh, so what prompted me to start Khan Academy? I'll get, I'll try to give the short answer. I, well, I was always fascinated by education. I was always fascinated by this idea that, um, you know, some kids, they seem to have all the capability in the world, but for some reason they lose their confidence. And I always thought that maybe it was, it had nothing to do with their ability. It had much more to do with that They just had gaps in their knowledge that you could fill in. And so about 15, 16 years ago, one of my cousins who was 12 years old at the time. So the same age as a lot of y'all, it just came out of conversation that she was having trouble with, with math in particular. And so I offered to tutor her remotely. She was in New Orleans and I was in Boston at the time. And uh, I saw with her the same, you know, that, that, that if I, filled in her gaps that she was able to learn anything. And uh, so then I was kind of hooked tutoring her. So I started tutoring some other uh, cousins, word spread through my family that free tutoring was going on. Uh, and I started making stuff for them. As I said earlier, you know, my background was in computer science. So that would empowered me to code some uh, question generators for them and for me to be able to keep track of what they were doing. And it was actually a friend that suggested that I start making some videos to supplement these things. Uh, and I initially thought that was a bad idea. I said, you know, YouTube, that's for cats playing piano. That's not for real mathematics. Uh, but I got over the idea that it wasn't my idea and I gave it a shot. And so, you know, I started making stuff for my cousins and it started to become clear that people who are not my cousins were finding it useful. And, you know, one of the really powerful things about coding is, and, and, and things like video, is that they scale, is that if it works for my 15 cousins, maybe it could work for 15,000 people, maybe it could work for 15 million people. And so in the back of my mind, uh, I said, hey, may maybe this could be a thing that could reach a lot of folks. So I set up as a not-for-profit in 2008, 2009. And back then it was a little bit delusional. I was in this walk-in closet kind of dreaming of creating uh, something that could help the world, that could help billions of people. But you know, we fast forward about 10 years since I quit my day job. Uh, and you know, Khan Academy has about 100 million registered users. and uh, we are doing our best in conjunction with amazing partners like Co.org and others and, and amazing teachers around the world to try to empower as many folks as possible. Well, as a teacher, I can say that we definitely appreciate tools like Khan Academy um, being able to supplement the things that we do and to be able to fill in those gaps. We have another question from another viewer in Ashburn, Virginia. And we wanted, or they want to know, like, what did you do in order to promote Khan Academy, right? Like when you started, it, you know, the online stuff was kind of still up and coming. Um, are there any people who were reluctant to try it? And how did you overcome that? 
Yeah, you know, a lot of people, Khan Academy was one of, you know, there, you, in on the internet these days or even a while ago, you always hear about things going viral where, you know, someone posts a video and then everyone starts sharing, you know, whatever else. Khan Academy didn't really go viral. It was more of kind of a slow word of mouth uh, that I was putting stuff out there. I think people back in 2006, 2007 were doing web searches, looking for help with things. You know, kind of, I wasn't the first person to even make, you know, lessons on YouTube. Uh, but I think, you know, I, there was something nice that maybe I was making for my cousins. And so they felt very authentic. Uh, and I and people, I think, really resonated with with uh, that. I think so. So that's how it grew. And people started telling folks and whatever. I didn't have any marketing budget or <laughs> anything like that. <laughs> I think the the other question, you know, is how did I believe that this was worth doing? Because it is true that it, in the early stages of doing anything, especially if you're doing something that is novel, a lot of folks are going to look at you a little bit weird and say, wait, I don't know anyone who's done that. Why would that work? Uh, and, and so I definitely got a lot of that from friends and family. I'd you know, given up a good job uh, that people thought was a legitimate job. And I was living off of savings and my first son was born. And so you know, it was, it was stressful. And so you, know, you, have to, you, you can't always depend on everyone else believing in what you do. You have to just say, hey, look, I'm, I'm getting some data here that this is, this is beneficial for folks. So I'm just going to keep sticking to it and, and keep believing in it. And, uh, you know, luckily it, it did eventually get enough traction that, that folks started believing in it and started supporting it. That's absolutely beautiful. So thank you so much, Sal. So as we had said earlier, it's Teacher Appreciation Week, and we wanted to give some shout outs to the hardworking teachers who are finding such creative ways to, to basically help keep their students engaged. So uh, we're going to share my screen for a second, if you're if you haven't already submitted a testimonial, you can submit a testimonial or a question for us uh, about your favorite teacher. But I'm going to ask Sal and Flo to read out some of the things that people have posted on, on already. So uh, Flo, can you read the first one, and then Sal can go to the next one. My wife and one of my best friends are teachers. I also had several teachers that had a big influence on me at a young age that changed my life. Now seeing the importance of teachers on my own kids' lives, I couldn't be more proud of the work they do. Nacho Average Teacher. Nacho Average Teachers, you're better than strawberries <laughs> and the guacamole to put me in a good mood. That's great. Sal, can you help us with these next two and read the shout outs to teachers? Let's see, Jonathan Alzheimer says, to all the amazing teachers, he is in caps, and school leaders who are selflessly, who selflessly give their, their all every day, who wake up with a passion to inspire and always look to make an impact on the lives of students. We see you, exclamation mark. And there's this nice, what the world sees teachers doing, top of the iceberg, what they're actually doing. Yeah, that's, I think, very, very accurate. And then Chris Miller, and I'm gonna move these windows around so I can see. Chris Miller wrote, at the end of my driveway this morning, yeah, I'm a bit weepy. And it says an awesome said a mocha teacher lives here. We love you. So I, Chris sounds is, is a teacher and his community clearly appreciates him by putting that oh, post, you know, on sweet. his front lawn. And uh, Flo, do, do you have any testimonials from our audience from the episode as well? Yes, I do. Um, here we go. So we want to shout out Miss Molina. Um, and she's in Huntington Park High School, and she just wanted to say that she is the most empathetic teacher. So shout out to Miss Molina. Also, we want to thank our computer applications teacher for everything that she is doing during this hard time to help us succeed in our. Thank you for helping us with the basics of coding and how to make a simple website. Happy Teacher Appreciation Day, and that is from Abigail in Minden, Vermont. And right. finally, hi, my name is Gray. I'm a seventh grader at AOIS Rosemont, and my favorite teacher is Mrs. Smith. She is the best tech teacher ever, exclamation. She is so caring and kind to all her students, and I really appreciate her and hope that she will get the shout out she deserves. Well, shout out, Miss Gray. All right, well, thank you, Sal, and thank you to all the teachers out there who are doing amazing work. Uh, and we're gonna switch to gallery view so we can see the entire audience. And can everybody make a little heart like this for the teachers 
uh, everywhere who are basically working hard. Teachers are doing some of the most important work in the world, especially during this pandemic, to keep our students uh, engaged and learning. Thank you so much. And unfortunately, it's now time to say our goodbyes to Sal. Sal, thank you for joining us today and thank you for explaining Boolean expressions to us. It's an honor to have you join us on Code Break. So could everybody wave goodbye to Sal? It was not, not an honor. <laughs> it was not, not an honor. Thank you. Well, goodbye, Sal. And we're gonna continue on with Flo. So uh, Flo, can you quickly tell us, uh, you're, an, you're a teacher in Oakland, right? What is it that you teach in Oakland? Um, I teach math and computer science. Math and computer science. So can you tell us, uh, uh, when you got into teaching computer science, was it intimidating? How did you get into it? Oh my, was it intimidating? Absolutely. Um, I think that at first, I don't think of myself as a computer scientist. Um, and so, yeah, when you look at tech companies, you know, you don't see a lot of people that look like me. Um, but I'm excited because computer science and mathematics have a lot of I'm into computer science. My math, uh, one of my uh, co-workers introduced it to me. They were using a little turtle program to draw shapes. Um, and I was helping them out with all the angles and things like that. So math have a lot in common. And so although it's intimidating, I think that teachers should not be afraid because, you know, it's everywhere and we're all going to have to use it. All right. So one thing that's exciting about Flo is Flo teaches at Oakland School District and she uh, began teaching computer science and then she helped get her entire school district. This is an entire district where none of the classrooms, none of the schools offered any computer science. And just a few years ago, thanks to Flo's help, every single school in Oakland is now teaching computer science and it's become one of the most popular courses because Flo helped prepare existing teachers in the existing schools, whether it's math teachers, English teachers, history teachers, or even art teachers begin teaching computer science. So if you're in a school that doesn't offer computer science and coding, whether you're a student or a parent, you can ask your school's principal to send a teacher to code.org's professional learning program. So have them visit code.org and experts like Flo will help prepare the existing teachers at the school to begin teaching computer science so when school starts again in the fall, you'll have a computer science class. And that's, that training for the teachers is gonna be happening over the summer. So now we're gonna go to the next section of learning about conditionals. We're gonna learn about flow charts. And since uh, Flo is here uh, with us, she's gonna teach us about flow charts. Uh, Flo, can you get, get this going and share your screen and tell us, teach us how flow charts work? Let's share our screen here. And of course, we have to pick a teacher and name. And make sure Flo. we turn our video on. <laughs> of course. Wait, did I share? Uh, you're not on screen share yet. Mm -hmm. There we are. OK, so make sure we have our video, right? Uh, no, wait, there we are. Yay, okay, so make sure you all can see me during fun with flow and flow charts. Listen, you guys don't understand how excited I am to be doing fun with flow charts. So we're gonna play a game actually um, that utilizes flow charts and some of the Booleans that we learned about earlier. Remember the word of the day is Boolean. Um, and a Boolean is something that can be answered with a yes or no or true or false. So we're going to be checking some Boolean statements in this card game where we flip over cards and try to keep our score and see what our score is at the end of the game. Remember that our score always begins at zero. So we have the first little diamond. And then the first diamond, our Boolean is to check if the card is red. So remember, if it is red, or it's not red, right? Because the cards can be red or black. And if the card is red and the statement returns true, we will add, we will subtract one from our score, okay? So this is the flow chart that we're going to use to play this game. Let's go ahead and play. Our first card is red three. You're gonna 
our next card is going to be a black pen. So again, you're going to check the boolean to see if the card is red. Next, we have a red seven, a red seven. So we're going to check to see if the card is red. Okay, all right, so that's the end of this round. Let's see what's our score. Do we have some participants who would like to share their scores? So if anyone knows the answer, just raise your hand and we'll call on one of you. Let's see, I see Laurel raised her hand first. So Laurel, I'm gonna unmute you. Do you have the answer? Yeah, I got one. Is that the right answer, Flo? Well, yeah, we're going to walk through. Does anybody else have a different answer or is there anybody else with the same answer? Let's see. Amishi. Um, I got two. Amishi. Oh, Amishi got two. Let's see. Okay, well, let's go. Yeah, let's go ahead and walk through and see um, what happened. So let's go through this together. So remember, our score begins at zero. And when we flip our first card, we're going to check to see if the card is red. And in this case, it is true. So we're gonna add one to our score. So now we have a score of one. We are going to check our next card, which was a black seven, a black 10. So if the card is red, no, that's false. So we're going to subtract one from our score. So now we're back to zero. Our next card was a red seven. So we're going to check, is the card red? And that statement is true. So we add one, to our score and we end up with a score of one. Yay, congratulations to all of you who got a score of one. So now we're going to add on to our flow charts and see what happens if we can um, add more statements, add more Booleans to the flow chart, okay? We're gonna play the same game. We're gonna have our cards. We're gonna flip our cards and try to keep our score. But this time the flow chart is a little bit different. We're gonna start off by checking the first Boolean in the diamond if the card is red. If the card is red, it returns true. We're going to add one to our score. Else, if the card is false, we're going to check if the number is greater than six. And in this case, we're gonna check that Boolean. Yes, it's greater than six. No, it's greater, not greater than six. If it returns true, <clears throat> then we are going to add two to our score. If that Boolean returns false, we are going to subtract one from our score. So there's a little bit more going on this time um, and you all are going to play. So everybody's going to play because I think this time we're going to do a poll for our score. So everybody's gonna play. Everybody on the Zoom call, everybody on YouTube, everybody's gonna play, okay? So let's play. Our first card is a black eight. You're gonna run through the flow chart, check the color, value. Our next card is going to be a red six. So we're going to check against the color and we check against the value. Our next card is a red 10. So we're gonna check, is the card red, true or false? Next card, back two. I hope you all are keeping your scores in there. Okay, so let's take a poll and see what is the score. So everybody go ahead and you're going to submit your scores. It looks like most of the folks got the right answer, but not everybody. <laughs> so about half of the students on the call have voted and about 70% of them got it right. Yeah. All right, almost everybody has picked their answer. Can we share the, the, the student guesses on the screen? Yes, let's share. All right. So it sounds like most people thought it was a three, but a lot of people thought it was a four or five or a six. So Flo, mm -hmm. can you give us the real answer? Absolutely, let's see, what, let's see what the real answer is going to be. 
And the answer is da, 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 three. Woo-hoo. So congratulations out there to all of you who got three. Let's go ahead and see how in the world do we get three for our score. So remember, we begin with the score at zero. Our first card was a black eight. So we checked this. The card is red. That's false. Um, is the number greater than six? And that's true. So we're going to add two to our score. So you guys can see the highlight, right? So you can see the path that we're taking in the flow chart. We're going to add two to our score. So now we have a score of two. Our next card is a red six. So we check the first Boolean statement in the diamond. Is the card red? Yes, that's true. So we're going to automatically add one to our score. So now we have a score of three. Our next card is a red 10. And so we check the first Boolean statement. Is the card red? That is true. So we are going to add one point to our score. Now we have score of four. Our next card is the black two. So we check if the card is red. No, that's false. The next Boolean statement says, or else is the number greater than six? No, that's false. So we subtract one point from our score and we end up with a score of three. So that is how we ended up with a score of three, right? So going through the two Boolean expressions and following the path of the tree, we ended up with a score of three. Um, let's have some more fun with charts this time. Let me get Kathy and Sophia involved. This is going to be fun. We're going to this time still be dealing with our deck of cards, but first we're going to check if the card is odd. So our first, the card is odd. And again, that's a true false statement. Um, if the card is odd, true, then Sophia will give Heidi a high five. If the card is not odd or false, then we have something else we can do. So we're going to check to see if the card is a diamond. So if the card is a diamond, Sophia and Heidi are going to do well. If the card is not a diamond, Sophia and Heidi will sing Baby Shark. Do, 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 do. Okay? So um, let me... Who came up with these? Who came up with these? <laughs> are we allowed to change the flow charts? <laughs> you can change the flow chart, Heidi. <laughs> right. So can you please pick an odd card for us? That's, that's Sophia and my request is an odd card. <laughs> We'll try. We'll try to pick a hard card. Any card you okay. want, as long as the number on it is odd. Or the okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Here we go. Look, as you guys can see, looking at the cards. Okay, I won't look. All right. Let me pick another card. Oh no! Stop. Here's the card. Uh oh. Can we see it? Uh oh, flow screen is frozen. What card did you get? It's, it's the nine of clubs. Nine of clubs. Can you show it again? Nine of clubs. Yeah. All right. So it's a it's it's an odd number. Oh, perfect. Ready, set. <laughs> okay, high stop there so we can see the screen. All right. Just give each other a high five. Sophia and I got off really. I'm worried we're gonna need to sing Baby Shark. Sophie, do you want to sing Baby Shark anyway? <laughs> Baby Shark. Do, 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 do. No. Do, 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 do. All right, maybe not. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much, Flo. So Flo showed us how if statements and flow charts work and testing Boolean expressions to be true. Now, that's not something you do just on flow charts. It's a really important concept in computer programming. And we tell the computer specifically what to do if something is true or false. Uh, we're going to demo this uh, soon in our app lab. But first, we want to do quick trivia time. Sophie, are you ready for today's trivia question? It's trivia time. So let's put up today's trivia question. How did Boolean expressions get their name? Number one, they were named after the famous Boolean bridge. Option two, the mathematician George Boole invented them. And option three, once a ghost scared a computer science named Leanne and named Boo and yelled Boo Leanne. I'll give you a hint. Option three is one that Sophie and I wrote ourselves, uh, but if you like it, you can vote for it, even if it's not true. 
I love that people are, <laughs> are voting for the ghost. Yeah, that's what I did. That's what you voted for Vote too, for Sophia. The ghost. Join All right, so most of you have guessed. Let's share people's guesses. And as most of you guessed correctly, uh, yeah, there is no such thing as a Boolean bridge and there weren't, and there aren't any ghosts. Ghosts are not real. Uh, Boolean expressions were named after George Boole. And some interesting facts to share. George Boole is a mathematician who lived during the 1800s. He came up with Boolean logic long before computers even existed. Uh, two other interesting things about him, George Boole taught himself. He actually didn't graduate from high school. He taught himself math and reading and writing. And then he actually started his own school as a teacher became a famous mathematician, and then became a math professor at Queens College, even though he never had any degree. So those of you who are learning and studying at home, you can get really far studying all by yourselves. And then lastly, if you think you are famous because Boolean expressions are named after you, George's wife was named Mary Everest, and Math Mount Everest was named after her dad. So this is a really unusual couple where one of them is had their name was made for Boolean logic. The other, the, the world's tallest mountain was named after them. So pretty interesting stuff. So now that we've learned about Boolean logic, I want to go into App Lab and show how we can use if statements. And we're now in the third part of our episode where we're going to learn about if statements. We're going to make an app uh, right now on the show to use these kinds of if statements. Bye-bye. Sophia is going to say goodbye to us, and I'm actually going to be joined by my son, Darius. Hi. Hi, Darius. That was a quick switcheroo. Darius, yep. how old are you? I'm 13 in middle school. You're in 13 in middle school. All right, so we're going to do a quick screen share and show Darius's screen. Uh, we're going to show App Lab over here. And so this here basically shows the app that we're working on. What you see on the left side of the screen is the app where we're in design mode. And we can actually basically build the app on the right side of the screen. Oops, my screen share messed up. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to screen share again. So what you see on the left side of the screen is the app that we're building. And what we're creating is a magic eight ball. So it's gonna look like this if you see me in the video. It's one of these eight balls where if you shake it, it's gonna give you a special answer that shows up uh, like that. And that answer is gonna be basically to answer a question, you ask it a, a yes, no type of question, and it's gonna tell you whether your, your answer is yes or not, kind of like a crystal ball. Uh, so first things first, let's make this thing actually look like an eight ball. So in this middle part, we're gonna click on this big button. This is a circular button. But Darius, if you could actually change the button to have a, a black border. Okay, so here we go. And then change the border width, it's two pixels wide. Can you make that a wider border? Okay, yeah, yeah, much wider. <laughs> That's a thick border, make it a little bit thicker. Oops, what just happened? What happened? Our page is reloading. Uh-oh. We're learning an important computer science concept called debugging. All right, I guess we need to start over, go back into anyway. design mode and click the button yep. and change the border color again to black and then the border width. 75, that's like a nice number. All right, so now we have our eight ball. Uh, can you also change the font color in the button? So uh, basically a little bit higher up here, the text color, can you change that to whatever color you'd like? Uh, make it blue. All right, blue sounds good. All right, so now we have an eight ball that basically when you click on that button, we want it to do something. So when you click on this, we want it to give us an, a kind of a yes, no answer. So if you could go to code mode and we're gonna write the code for what happens and it's gonna have an if statement in there testing a Boolean expression. But first we wanna check when the button gets clicked. So drag an on event block and you're gonna test and this on event block is gonna be an event handler when the eight ball is clicked, so click the ID and say, when magic eight ball is clicked, what are we gonna do? We want to then basically pick a random number to decide a random answer that the eight ball is gonna give us. How many answers do you want it to give us? Three. Up to three different answers? All right, so we're gonna pick a random number from one to three and store that number in a variable. So click on variables and declare a new variable. So variable X equals, and then in that little blank spot, we wanna pick a random number. So go into the math tab and choose a random number and if you want to have three different options you can go a random number from one to three instead of ten 
but we can make as many as we want. So now X is gonna be a random number. Each time you click on the button, we'll get a random number. And we wanna test if X equals one. This is where we use our Boolean expressions. We can give one answer. And if X equals two, we can give a different answer and so on. So go under control and pick out an if block. And in that little blank part, type X equals one. But this is really important. You need to use two equal signs. Because we're programming in JavaScript, this is one of the most annoying and difficult aspects of computer programming is in many languages such as JavaScript, C, C Sharp, Java, you need two equal signs when you're testing the value of something. If you use only one equal sign, it's gonna break your code. So if X is one, we want to show an answer for the magic eight ball. So you can now set the text inside the button. So go into UI controls and pull out the set text block. So if X is one, you want the magic eight ball to say something like, a, do you want to give it a yes. positive answer? Yes. Well, like a yes. No, yes. give like a stronger yes. Okay. Like definitely Absolute yes. Absolutely. 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 <laughs> absolutely yes. All right. So if X is one, it'll say absolutely yes. So and if X is not one, we want to do something else. How do we test if X is not one? Uh, Flo, can you help us out here? What should Darius do to, to add the opposite case of the else clause if X is not one? Well, if we want to add um, the else clause, then we need to click on the little plus of the uh, if block, and that will bring out the else. And we can actually click on it a couple times. We can be able to add all of our statements inside that block. Like this. All right, so after clicking the plus twice, so now you can test if this, if so, if x is not one else, if x equals two, and again, two equal signs, now we can put a different types of text. So now set text. All right, so the you want a different answer. Like, probably not. Probably not. All right, and then in the last case, do we need to test if x equals three? No, because there is one other answer possible, so it doesn't matter. All right, so now when you set text and change the text to the magic eight ball. So like nope or something. <laughs> nope. All right, so now we've got our magic eight ball uh, built and we can play it. So I'm gonna run with this magic eight ball and ask some questions about my son Darius. So did Darius enjoy coding in front of an audience of a thousand people? I'm gonna click. Oh, that's sad. Nope, nope. he did not. Oh, come on. Uh, does Darius love computer science? Probably not. Okay. Um, does, does Darius love his father? Nope. Darius. Uh, is Darius going to come back on the next Code Break episode? Nope. Okay, at this point, it should have said absolutely. Like The odds are against us. Is it going to give us a good answer? Nope. All right. If I say something putting... bad, say something bad. Okay. Okay. Is Darius going to get punished? Probably oh. not. Is it going to rain today? Absolutely. All right. Well, you can see how simple it is to make this magic eight ball game. And uh, if you want this on your own phone, you can click the share button uh, and then sit, send to phone. And it actually shows a QR code. So if any of you are in the audience, you can actually use your phones and scan that QR code. And the magic eight ball app that we built will be on your own phone and you can play it yourself. If you don't scan it right now, we're actually going to send this to you so you can actually make your own. But I want to also show you how simple it is to use the exact same code to make a very different app than the Magic 8-Ball. So here's an app that's a dice game. Basically, it rolls a dice and gives you an answer. And you can see when you click the button Roll Dice, it's going to pick another random number from 1 to 6. It will play a sound and show the number that we rolled. And if the dice value is greater than three, it'll say you won, else it'll say you lost. This is a lot like the card game that Flo just made. So if we roll the dice, it gives you a six and says you won. And you roll the dice again, it gives you a two, which is less than, not greater than three, and it'll say you lost. That's a super simple game, but what's nice about this game is you can build on it and make it more complicated. And we're gonna ask you to try doing some of these things. So for example, here's a multiplayer version of it where player one gets one roll, player two gets another roll, and whoever gets a higher number wins. So you roll the dice and player five wins and player two loses. Player five. Sorry, player one. <laughs> and you roll again and player two wins. 
And you can make this even more interesting. Uh, this is the more advanced version where each player gets two dice. And instead of showing numbers, they're actually going to show the image of a dice. Uh, and so Darius and I are going to play this. I'm going to be player one, and you be player two. OK, sounds good. All right, I'll roll the dice. And I got a seven. You got a seven. So we tied. And I'll roll it again. I got five plus four is a nine. So this time, I finally won. Uh, and as you can see, you can add more to this. You can make your game enter the names of the players. Instead of just being a win or a lose, you can keep score and see how many scores a player gets. These are basically all changes you can make super simply. The beautiful thing about computer programming is it starts with just those few blocks, but then you can add on it. Uh, so we actually are going to challenge you to do some of these things in App Lab yourself. So if you've given us your email, we'll send you this week's challenges. If you haven't already given us your email, go to code.org slash break and enter your email address. And what we'll send you is first some practice. You basically use if else statements to make a honeybee learn how to get honey. And that's something you can even do on a mobile phone. And for older students, you can do a code along to create the Magic 8-Ball app. And then for your challenge, there's two options. If you don't have a computer or if you're younger, you can make flow charts and pen and paper. And for our older students, we're going to challenge you either to modify the Magic 8-Ball app or to build your whole old dice roller game, make it two-player, add images, add the, the concept of keeping score, and so on. When you're finished with these, share it with your parents. And if they have social media, we'd love for you to share your creations on social media with hashtag CodeBreak or email it to us. And as always, we're going to invite the, the folks who submit stuff onto next week's episode to demo their creations. These, the things that we're asking you to do always include unplugged activities for students who don't have computers at home or for students who are working on a, on a smartphone. So we're done with today's episode. I wanted to give a last chance to, to thank Flo, our special guest who was a teacher, and a thank you to all the teachers. So as we go to gallery view, can we please all again hold, hold our hearts out for all the teachers out there? Darius, can you show a heart? Let's show hearts for all teachers who are working so hard to keep students all around the world learning. Thank you so much, Flo, for joining us. And everybody, if you're studying alone, take a code break. We'll see you all next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.